Yes, I think uh, you're right that all engineering is definitely based on data. So the way engineering has uh, evolved also is based on essentially borrowing ideas from science. So in science, people like uh, Newton actually observe facts around them and they try to figure out laws based on the facts that they observe. Data-centric engineering is about being able to build upon these laws that people have spent centuries actually writing down mathematically and fundamentally and to gather data in order to enrich the knowledge that these laws that are mathematical in, in uh, nature allow us to build predictions about the, the universe and things that we build and things that we, um, we design. So I think data-centric engineering is about the ability to use data to complement analytical models that people have spent a long time building. So this interface between analytical mathematical models and the data that we are now able to gather in large quantities is what I would say defines data-centric engineering. So to my mind, data-centric engineering can solve a vast, vast, vast variety of problems. So for example, uh, data-centric engineering has, is going to have impact on fields such as surgical simulation because in surgery, uh, designing new simulators that are able to help surgeons build uh, better skill sets and also improve their skills is going to be something that will emerge in the future and is already uh, taking place today. But to do that, one needs to understand the behavior of human organs, for example, their mechanical behavior and their deformation during surgery. Such understanding cannot be done outside of data acquisition, so that cannot be done analytically, and therefore one needs to be able to build upon analytical models and enrich them with data that is acquired on the fly. For example, using MRI data or CT scans or any other equipment that might be available during surgery. So this is an example where using, uh, let's say, black box analytical models is not going to be sufficient, and therefore data acquisition and assimilation inside the analytical formulations is going to be fundamental. So that's just one example out of many. So I think there are many points. So there are two points. One is open access and the other is data centric. So data centric engineering I think is important for the reasons that we just said, uh, which is that it allows to marry analytical mathematical models with data acquisition that is now available in large quantities and large quality as well. And the second is why open access. So uh, my personal view on this, and this is an intensively debated topic, uh, scientific literature should be open access. Firstly, because it is usually paid by the taxpayers. So therefore, anybody should have access to the literature without needing to go through a pay gate. So that is, that is my uh, firm conviction. So the fact that data-centric engineering is going to be an open access, is an open access journal, is of fundamental importance for that uh, particular reason. But further to that, I would say that uh, this is a data journal and data related journal and therefore data should be also made be made available so the data the algorithms the protocols the input the output and that will ensure that the research that is done is actually scientific research because scientific research has to be either falsifiable or reproducible if any of these two is not valid then this is not science So the audiences are going to be very vast in my opinion. So first of all, of course, practicing engineers that are going to be facing more and more challenges associated with understanding the data that they're actually gathering. So for example, people working in the, in the oil industry, people working in the medical industry, uh, but people working also in more traditional civil, aerospace, mechanical, um, and you name it, simply because the, the new paradigm now is not only to write equations down and use these equations to try to understand and govern and explain what we see, but also to 
enrich these equations by actual data. So any field where, where data is acquired on a daily basis, and that includes civil engineering, that includes medical engineering, aerospace engineering, for example, is going to be a very rich field, simply because in aerospace engineering, aircrafts can actually morph. So the, the wings will be able to actually deform and change shape based on the data that is going to be acquired. Uh, other areas include also programmable matter and soft robotics because these areas are um, super special because the device, the engineering device itself is the sensor that senses its own deformation and is going to actuate itself. So essentially you have a, a structure which is going to acquire its own data and based on that data decide how to actuate itself in order to reach a certain goal. And so that is um, probably the best possible characterization of data-driven or data-centric engineering because the device itself is going to have to make decisions based on the data that it itself generates, which is, is, is quite, a, quite a cool field. I think for data-centric engineering or any data-related uh, journal or discipline, being able to be certain that the data is actually valid and that the very data that is produced was the data used to produce the results in the paper. So that should be 100% verifiable by the future readers, simply because otherwise we are wasting public money. This is a pure waste and squandering of resources because the next person reading the paper will have to reproduce the data first and make sure that this works. And the same goes for algorithms, the same goes for input and output files. If you have to write from scratch a new algorithm, which it was already written and published in the paper, you're, you are wasting your time and therefore wasting public money as well. So my conviction is that anything related to data in particular should provide the data in open access as much as it, it, it is actually feasible and the data is publishable because there are some limits uh, related to ethics, for example, if there are medical data, and that is going to be a problem that people need to address. But in general, I think that if it is possible, then this should be done. The same goes about uh, the algorithms that can easily be published, and also the, um, the approach that was used in order to acquire the data, so the protocol, it <clears throat> is also equally important because producing data is one thing, but the means that were used to produce the data can be as important as the data itself. So I think that's what I would say on that.